a treat, and so am I. I'm so glad my next guest is here, because I always love getting a chance to talk to prominent Republicans. Please give a warm, late-show welcome to the junior senator from Kentucky, Rand Paul. <laughs> See you again. I heard Republicans love to come on your show. You having trouble getting Republicans? No, there are only a few we want to talk to. <laughs> you're on, the, you're right. on the short list. Good. You and Ted Cruz, my two favorites. Now, uh, uh, it's good to have you back. Thanks for coming back. But before we talk about anything else, uh, what can you tell us? Uh, what do you know about the, the the terrible train wreck that happened today? Uh, uh, GOP uh, leadership, friends, family were on a train to go out to West Virginia for a retreat, and there was a, an accident and derailment, and one man was killed. W what, what do you know about that? You know, I know there were over 200 members of Congress on the train, senators and House members. I don't think any of them were seriously injured, uh, but I think two members of the, the truck, uh, at least one died and another seriously injured. And so it's a terrible accident, but I guess could have been worse had the train derailed. The train didn't actually derail, so I don't think there were any uh, serious injuries on the train, other than the engineer. I take that back. The engineer was seriously injured. And and how do you, as a, as a, as one of the members of the GOP or someone in in the Senate who wasn't on the trip, how do you find out about it from the news, or is there is it? I don't mean to be facetious, but is there like a phone tree where important information like this is passed around the Senate first? Well, I happened to be on a news station here in New York and heard about it, and I got ratted out because I was supposed to be at this thing, and I was skipping out to come watch a play in New York, and no one was supposed to know I was here. So I think I'm in trouble now for not being on the train. I was supposed to go to this conference. They yeah. would have found out you were in New York oh, tonight that's right. at 11:35. That's right, they would have. All right, you got you got to learn how to be yeah. a secretive better. But I, but I will but I will tell you there've been you know in the last year I've been involved in a lot of stuff. And when I was at the shooting at the baseball park, mm -hmm. and my wife found out about that on the news, uh, or actually from a friend. A friend came banging on the door saying he's not dead, he's not dead, you know, because it was so horrific and people were finding out about it mm -hmm. instantaneously on the news. Yeah, you've had a hell of a year. You, besides being at the, the tragic shooting at the softball field where uh, Representative Scalise was shot, um, you also were uh, uh, attacked uh, or assaulted, blindsided by a neighbor. Are you, I know you punctured a lung. Are you okay? I've been shot at. I've been mugged. I'm hoping 2018 is a better year. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I am on the, I am on the men, but uh, I found that there's sort of a secret society out there. And people come up to you and say, you know, I broke three ribs. Oh, I broke two ribs. People come up to you all the time, and they want to commiserate because it is pretty painful. So I've been through a lot, but I am, I'm on the mend. There are more fun ways to break ribs <laughs> yeah. than to be assaulted by your neighbor. Yeah. Now, I know you, you've been asked many times, like, right. what, what this fight was about, and you, you don't want to talk about that. Um, what was the fight about? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the first thing I guess I would say is I wouldn't characterize it as a fight. I was attacked from behind with no warning. You were blindsided. You had I ear... I was wearing hearing right. protection, so didn't know it was coming. And um, hadn't spoken with him in a decade. So it really wasn't sort of a building, fuming thing where we had words. It was just sort of, I think, uh, he must have lost it, some kind of rage reaction. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I'm really proud of my yard. How could someone be so mad about grass clippings, mm -hmm. you know? But, uh, there was a report that that maybe that your yeah. little uh, your, your your clipping I, pile I, was too I, high yeah. and that upset. How I, high was the clipping pile? <laughs> just you know, because I, if it was a fight over clipping piles or an attack over right. clipping piles, that is the most suburban white man thing I have ever yeah. heard. <laughs> yeah, I think that we sometimes we are channeling a lot of rage on both sides, politically sure. and otherwise, grass clippings, you name it. We're unhappy with each other, and I think sometimes we see people on television and we think. That person's not human. They don't hurt, you know? Right, right. But I can say, look, I was human. So I, I guess a lot of people made light of the fact that I was attacked, but, you know, I was very sick. I had pneumonia twice. I had trouble breathing at night. I really struggled for weeks and weeks to recover from this. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I think there's a way with, that we ought to be able to have disagreements and figure out ways to get beyond it if they're political disagreements or other. And uh, I think we try to do some of that in Congress. It sort of gets lost in all the clutter of everything else we talk about. But there really is probably the unwritten story is that there's more discussions going across party lines than you would ever believe. Well, here's something that you agree with some Democrats about. And um, I, wanna, I know you're at the State of the Union last night. I want to get to that in, in just a moment. Um, but um, let's talk uh, marijuana 
for just a second. Uh, the you uh, would you describe yourself as a libertarian Republican? Very much so, and I, you know, I'm very much an advocate for freedom. I don't tell people what to do with their freedom, but mm -hmm. as long as you're doing your freedom on your own time, you mm -hmm. ought to be able to pretty much do what you want to do as long as you don't hurt somebody else. So That's... you're not opposed to legalization of marijuana? No. In fact, I favor letting the states, you know, make the decision. Uh, we've got about 28 states that have legalized medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. We now have half a dozen states that have legalized uh, recreational marijuana. And really, the federal government ought to just stay out of it. I think people ought to be able to make these decisions. Adults should make decisions on what they do, what they drink, what they well, smoke. Well, how, how do you feel... Uh, then how do you feel about Jeff Sessions? Because Jeff Sessions is... Uh, is uh, deeply opposed to the idea that states should make this decision themselves. What and 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 he is all for uh, returning to prosecution of people who are <laughs> selling or consuming marijuana in states where it's been legalized. I think the best way to imagine is you've heard sort of the response to a younger crowd. Mm -hmm. Imagine Congress mm -hmm. and imagine some octogenarians that just watched Reefer Madness for the first time in 1937. Okay, they've mm -hmm. just watched it on the old eight millimeter reels. They sure. just watched Reefer sure. Madness. And they think it's the gateway to the end of the world, and so they think they should lock these people up. Yeah, but you'll it's go very, insane. It's the jazz cigarettes. Yeah, it's you know. very it's very expensive to lock people up, but it also ruins young people's lives. And one of my complaints about the war on drugs is that, you know, four out of five people being arrested are black or brown. You know, it's poor people. It's people that don't have the resources to get a good attorney that are getting arrested. Even though when you look at statistics, whites smoke marijuana just as much as black or Hispanic. And yet, when you look at the prisons, they're full of Hispanics and African Americans because we disproportionately uh, arrest poor people, and there are disproportionately more poor people among minorities. But it's it's really it's stark. You go to our prisons, and then when people get out, you can't vote again, you can't be hired again. You either go back to. Are the you drug for trade. people who have served their uh, their sentence to be allowed to vote? Yes. Okay. And I. Um, That's good. Is that legal in Kentucky? Can they do that in Kentucky? Kentucky's one of the worst states on this, but I have lobbied before the state legislature to give people back their right to vote. I actually co-sponsored a bill with Harry Reid, who I didn't always get along with, mm -hmm. but I co-sponsored a bill with him to get you, give back your federal right to vote after you've served your time. And I think that, uh, you know, it should be about second chances. Most of us, for religious reasons, believe that people have second chances. I think the law should give you a second chance. And really, if you look at the people in prison that are sort of making mistakes sometimes, they're making mistakes as young, mostly men, and mostly at a young age, and that'll be given a second chance. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 legally... <laughs> I agree, I agree. Um, I mean, legally, I have to ask you, are you high right now? No, but they had like three bottles of vodka, and I usually don't drink before. But they said, "Go ahead and drink." They they said you like the green room. Yeah, they told me they said you're, that Stephen he loves the guest to have a few drinks. So I right? love it you when know? the senators are lubricated. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> we got to take a little break, but we're right back with more Senator Rand Paul. Everybody, stick around.